Pride's Picks is spoiler heavy and full of crude language. I swear like a sailor and Lockheed's no better. <laughs> Consider yourself warned. everyone, it's July 31st and I'm here with this week's Pratt's Picks. This week we have a lot from Marvel, a bit from DC, and some great stuff coming out of Boom and Vertigo Studios. So let's jump in with X-Men issue 3. Now this was initially going to be like X-X-Men because it was an all-female cast. And I was super excited about it. The little arc had Jubilee showing up with a baby, then the baby infects the mansion with some sort of technology demon and it turns out it's Archaea. Uh, her brother Sublime is this viral being that they've come in contact with before and this is his twin sister who is kind of a handful. Turns out she has carried herself along in this baby because it has an implant of sorts and she is infecting the mansion and causing the danger room to turn on everybody. All the systems are going down, life support is fucking up and chaos is ensuing. Now you have an all-female ex cast trying to take care of the situation. I thought this book was going to be epic, and issue three is the end of this little arc. And I have to say that apparently the X-Men need Dick to get stuff done. I'm just going to have to put it like that because I felt like everybody was useless. And Jubilee, her like fucking biological clock is ticking, suddenly she needs a baby and she's all like, I don't want to give up my baby. The fuck is this, Ricky Lake? Oh man, I aged myself with that one. <laughs> but anyway, it was a big letdown and I really thought you put together all these powerhouses like Hope and Psylocke and Jubilee and Kitty Pride and something cool would come out of it and shit came out of it. So apparently X-Men need dick to get shit done. I would say piss on the whole arc. Maybe more is to come, maybe they're ending it with that, but right now I am unimpressed. And personally, my feelings are hurt because that was shit. Fuck you, Marvel. Let's jump into Uncanny X-Men issue 9. I'm not gonna lie, and I've said this before, the art is cute, but for some reason a lot of the blonde females look alike. The cuckoos look like Emma Frost, which apparently they're supposed to, but Magic looks like Emma. Well, now Dazzler shows up in this fancy little shield outfit that looks kind of like the Fantastic Four when they went all white and black. And it didn't look like her. I thought it was magic. I thought it was White Queen. I was like, what the fuck's going on? And later they're like, oh, it's Dazzler. Totally forgot S.H.I.E.L.D. roped her in issues ago and brought her into this because the art makes it so hard to buy. She goes after Fabio Gold Balls. And they even make a joke about the balls being actual gold. They're not even actual gold. What the fuck is this kid good for? She goes after him. Then the X-Men, Scott and them are like, listen. The uncanny X-Men are like, listen, we're not going to let this guy go. So then they show up and chaos ensues. I felt like nothing got accomplished this issue. So I'm going to say skip this issue. If you've been reading the arc so far, maybe read it on the shelf and buy something good. Or just wait for the trade because I was super extremely unimpressed with this. I just couldn't get behind it at all. Marvel, what are you doing? Moving on to Guardians of the Galaxy issue 5. Now, since the beginning of Guardians of the Galaxy, I've actually enjoyed this comic. I don't know much about the Guardians, so it was nice to learn about them, holding Tony Stark's hand and skipping through the universe. This book, eh, issue 5 wasn't doing it for me. It had a couple cute moments between Rocket Raccoon and Tony, and later Angela, this big goddess shows up to F stuff up and Star-Lord goes to a, an unknown ally that nobody would suspect except you kind of guess at the end who it is to ask for help because he's starting to question all these galaxies that keep kind of folding in on themselves and shit's getting random. Remember when I told you how the ultimate universe was bleeding in and Galactus was showing up over there? Well Star-Lord sees these worlds like colliding and he's confused and he's like what the fuck was that? Am I the only one that saw it? He seeks out help. The lady's like, what the fuck did you just see? And nothing really got accomplished, minus him going to get help from somebody you would least expect. Eh, this issue I wasn't impressed with, but overall I have been enjoying the books. So if you're going to skip this issue, at least wait for the trade or read it on the shelf because there were some cute moments in there. 
And Tony Stark himself thinks he is comparable to Captain Kirk. The fuck is that? Freaking rabies ass Rocket Raccoon doesn't know who Captain Kirk is and never heard of the USS Enterprise, so fuck that guy. Mm. Let's move out of Marvel and jump into DC with Batman Incorporated issue 13. I cannot wait for this arc to end fast enough, man. I don't give a shit that Damien's gone. For some reason, they still have Chris Burnham doing the art and BT dubs. When I was at Comic-Con, I swear to God, I think it was him, was doing the art on the big screen and it was the awful Chris Burnham art and my boyfriend stood there and forced me to watch it because he knows how much I hate this guy's art. It was awful. And if that guy was the guy that was doing the art at San Diego Comic-Con, I didn't stop to check out his name because it was so terrible. Pretty sure it was him. Boo, sir. And DC, why are you kissing his ass, man? Get rid of him and get a new artist in already. Because I hate reading Batman Incorporated right now. Basically, Gordon has Bruce Wayne and Gordon's like, what do you know? And Bruce Wayne's like, what do you know? And then Batman flashes over to Batman fighting Talia and shit gets real. Talia goes too far. Batman goes way too far. And in the end, you guys won't believe what happens, but we have a familiar face show up. Who could it be? Bet you don't know. I know because I read the book. Ugh, the art is awful. If you want to see good art, don't open this book. But if you want to know what happens, I guess open it. This is definitely not a buy it now. Read it on the shelf. I am... I'm pretty sure this week Batman doesn't mean good DC book. When usually it does. Usually Batman's one of the buy it nows or wait for the train. This one makes me want to rip the pages out that Chris Burnham drew and wipe my ass with them. Let's jump into the Batman Annual Issue 2. This book is featuring the Anchoress... The Asylum and Zero Year. Okay, so the Asylum builds this new fortress of security and they want to test it out. So who do they call? The Great Detective. I don't know if they just have Batman on speed dial or what, but they're like, hey Bats, can you come? So at first it's from the point of view of this new security guy and he's like, oh my god, my first day there is his first day there and Batman's. So part of the story is Batman jumping through all these hoops trying to get out of this facility and all along the way going, you know, Penguin would know how to get out of this and Mr. Freeze would do this to get out of this. And he seemed kind of like a, a dick. He seemed a little too know-it-all and smarty-pantsy for me. I wasn't really enjoying that. But I guess if you're a big Batman fan, you might be behind that. I thought it was kind of shitty. The main part of the story is around this ghostly black-eyed woman named the Anchoress. And she does have powers, and she's killed accidentally back in the day. But apparently, way back in the day, she put herself in Arkham. She put herself in Arkham Asylum because it was an asylum. She put herself there to be safe. And along the years, Batman shows up and starts throwing these criminals in there. She gets pushed farther and farther to the back, and she ends up going to, like, the basement. And they fucking forget about her. They stop doing any psych treatment. They stop trying to help her. They just kind of leave her down there. She hears Batman shows up, blames him for everything, and goes after him. I kind of like that fact that Asylum is. Arkham Asylum was supposed to be a place of safety. Kind of reminded me of American Horror Story Season 2 with it, the Asylum. And at first it's got such good intentions. And in the end it's twisted into something so disgusting. Even aliens don't want to live there. It was that bad fucking American Horror Story. Just don't watch season two, watch season one. But this book is a whole story arc in one book. So if you want something that's just a one-shot Batman, watch him kind of be a badass and kind of get a different perspective on the asylum, this is what it is. If you're looking for a really good annual book, this is not it. Wait till the next one. I'd say read it on the shelf or steal it from a friend. Do not buy that book. DC has let me down with Batman this week. So let's jump out of DC and move into Vertigo Comics with Collider. This is by Simon Oliver. The art is different. It kind of reminds me a little bit of the Batman art. A little quirky. I don't hate it though. The coloring is really bright and fun so it's very enjoyable to look at. But... Collider is basically the world. The world now. Except that for some reason, physics are getting fucked up. Like, every so often, the law of physics just don't work. 
So you walk down the street and suddenly everybody's floating. And then you call 911 and they're like, is this an emergency? Is this for police? Or is this a problem with physics? Because apparently the world's used to this now. And these guys come out and they try to like put the area on lockdown, fix whatever's wrong using some sort of tech. The book wasn't enjoyable and it was at the same time. I liked it because it was something different. I liked it because I haven't really seen this, like a whole world where physics just out of nowhere will just stop working and people can get sucked into space. It's kind of cool and it's not something I see all the time. I didn't like it because it felt a little drug out. It felt a little slow to go. There was one incident they're working with and there's like this main character who's sort of not likable at all. And basically his father's the one that kind of told him like, you know, someday the world's not going to work the way it's supposed to. So his dad, I guess, kind of knew this whole event was going to happen. Uh, I'm not super attached. I will wait for the next issue in hopes that maybe it picks up. But if you want something different or you're a big law of physics kind of person and you want something scientifically to, I don't know, wet your whistle, Collider might be it. Wasn't my cup of tea, but the coloring was beautiful. Let's jump out of there and move into Vertigo's The Wake, issue three. Now, we've been reading The Wake. At first I compared it to Sequest and then I compared it to some other shows. This issue felt a lot like X-Files. In issue two, they came across this sea being and it was they had it like preserved as a specimen. Well, it turns out it's not really being preserved and it's kind of been watching them the whole time and fucking with them. It can do some sort of mental projection and make them hallucinate. And then when they hallucinate, it wreaks havoc on this underwater sea lab and people are getting sucked into the ocean, people are getting ripped apart. This issue was very much a horror story. And it was exciting, and there was a lot of crazy hallucinating, and it was intense. So the first issue was kind of fun, the second issue was a little interesting, and this one is downright weird. But it was kind of like Sequest meets the X-Files. So I still think The Wake is something I want to keep reading. I'm enjoying it, and if you like the first couple issues, definitely pick up issue three. If you haven't read it yet, you have time to catch up. Read The Wake with me. <laughs> Let's jump into Boom Studios' Next Testament, Issue 3. We've read this already together, and I've talked about the first two issues with y'all. There is this guy that is some sort of god. He thinks he's god. He's telling everybody he's god. He pulls together this group of believers, and he has this big dinner party. And then he fucking kills almost all of them in Issue 2. Like, he wreaks havoc. And then issue three has a couple escaping. And this couple was the young couple that he claimed loved each other very much because he could see into their souls. They escape, but I'm pretty sure he's about to come after them. The art in this is different. I like that the actual being himself is multicolored. He has just these different ribbons of color all over him the whole time. And he is a very angry god. He sees the worst in people and then he fucks them up for it. He doesn't really like human creation at all. Even the good ones, he wants to rip apart anyway. So if you want to see a very unhappy god ripping humanity to shreds and kind of like it at the same time, read the next testament, issue three. And if you're that one guy leaving all that religious comments crap in the bottom, keep trolling me, man. I still don't get this book. We are going to wrap it this week with Kick-Ass 3, issue one from Icon Studios. Now, Hit Girl has been captured by the authorities, and she's in a high-security prison. And she leaves a note for Kick-Ass and his friends with money, with aliases, with weapons, everything they need to bust her out. She gives them timestamps. She gives them security cards. She is prepared. She has seen this shit coming. Big Daddy had her set up, and Big Daddy's like, listen. When shit hits the fan, you're going to need to be prepared and have your backup ready. So she does. And then the guys all band together. They're like, she'd do it for us. They show up. And then they're like, ooh, this looks like it might be harder than we thought. Let's just, mm. And then, like, somebody shines a security light on them. And they're like, fuck. And they run. They bitch out. And even her, she's sitting in the jail. And she's like, motherfuckers. Like, she knows they tried, but they didn't really try. And then they bailed on her. And the rest of the issue is them being half-assed heroes without Hit Girl because we all knew she was the glue holding all this shit together. So this issue was shit. It wasn't that it was bad. I was just so disappointed in Kick-Ass and all his friends. 
that I just want more Hit Girl because when Hit Girl's there is when the book's really good anyway. So I would say read it on the shelf. Don't buy this issue because without Hit Girl, Kick Ass is nothing. And this issue will prove it. Read it on the shelf. Wait for the trade. Kick Hit Girl will be back. And when she's back, that's when I'll start reading this shit again. I'm a little disappointed. I am going to wrap up this week with a good cause. Now, DC is doing this cosplay contest for Infinite Crisis. And when I was at San Diego Comic-Con, they're like, you should enter your Harley Quinn. Well, I don't know what happened between the actual approval process, but for some reason, my photo has been in hiatus limbo for like a week and a half. And it's supposed to be approved in 24 hours, but a lot of people are having the same complaints, so I'm not quite sure what's going on. So I decided, fuck it, I don't need to enter this contest. But there's this one girl in the contest that is very, very sweet. Her name is Jay Justice, and I will put a link below for y'all to go and check her out. She is the nicest cosplay girl, and amongst a sea of bitchy, drama-filled, self-important cosplay girls, to see a nice girl that does it truly just because she enjoys the costumes and she enjoys the characters, like, it's so refreshing and endearing, and I miss that. I've been just seeing so many horrible people lately that I think cosplay sucks. And then they meet a girl like Jay and she's so nice. If you want a girl that is not afraid to cosplay as somebody like Shepard Book and pull it off, Jay is the girl. And if you think a girl with that much balls and guts should win a contest with up against breasty other Wonder Women and half-naked Harley Quinns, I feel like this is the girl you should vote for, so go to the link below. It only takes a second to log in with Facebook, click like, and give her full stars on her creativity because she's adorable and smart and unique and kind and make her dreams come true because she could win a trip to PAX. And I'm going to PAX, so then I'd be able to high-five her and tell her she's amazing and she would know it in person. And that's my spiel. So it was nice talking to y'all. I missed you, and I will see you next week. Good night, everybody. Mwah.